Voracious otters chasing caimans, dreadful fish with human teeth, bloodthirsty sharks, the biggest leeches, camouflaging turtles with bottomless maws, and much more. In today's episode, you'll see the most dangerous river monsters of the Amazon River captured on camera. Well, before we get on to the videos, I suggest that you take a look at one extremely curious picture posted on the web by a kayaker named Tom. The man went sailing in the Amazon and accidentally met such an unusual monster. Of course, it was not possible to determine who exactly it was. The creature, as the author of the photo, quickly enough disappeared from sight. Who do you think it could have been? Alligator? A predator unknown to science? Or some kind of mutant? Write in the comments. Anyway, it's great that the kayaker didn't meet an anaconda. Here it is, in my opinion, the real evil of the Amazon River. Let's start with a fact known to many people. Anaconda is the most massive snake in fauna. There are still all sorts of debates about the exact dimensions of the creeper. Some say that it grows to no more than 20 feet in length. Others say that up to 26 feet. And there's something from the category of fairy tales in which people have met 65-foot creepers. Be that as it may, according to official data, the largest snake slightly exceeded 16 feet in length with a weight of 215 pounds. Usually, adults don't grow to more than 16 feet in length, although they actually have all the circumstances to do so. Thanks to a stunning camouflage color the anaconda has, it can hide without much difficulty both in the water and among the leaves on trees. It may seem that since it's a large snake, it lives on land. No, it's exactly the opposite. The anaconda, on the other hand, has crawled into the water and has no intention of coming out. In its new habitat, it's much easier to get around. It uses almost no energy. In terms of food, everything is more than okay. And that's assuming that our guest has no poisonous teeth. Of course, the anaconda wouldn't have grown so large if it were completely safe for others. The lack of toxin is compensated for by several rows of small, hook-like teeth facing inwards. No animal, even a relatively large one, can escape its grip. And the painful sensations from the attack of an anaconda is the tip of the iceberg. Did you know that the victims of this snake can be digested for days or weeks? And that's another great way to save energy. When it comes to food, our guest has no particular preference. It's said that the snake can eat literally everything in sight. Even medium or large animals are at risk. If you thought that Mother Nature couldn't come up with a more frightening creature, then I hasten to reassure you, it's not true. At least in the same river, you can encounter a fish called the Black Paku. It's a rather large underwater inhabitant, with the main and most noticeable feature being its human-like teeth. Black Paku is considered the largest representative of its family in the whole of South America. In length, the fish can reach 42 and a half inches but it usually doesn't exceed 27 inches. The teeth of the black paku are not at all presentable. At the very least, they're square, and this is already very strange. Instead of piercing the victim with fangs and tearing it, the paku bites through the body of the prey and tears off pieces of flesh. According to experts, this fish can easily crack even nuts with its jaw. The only good thing is that the black paku leads a mostly solitary life and feeds on all sorts of minnows, plankton, insects, and snails. As soon as it grows up, its priority will shift to vegetation. But one that grows up and does not change its priorities, even a bit, and only becomes more voracious and stronger is the Arapaima, our next guest. This is one of the largest freshwater fish in the world, and at the same time, one of the most valuable commercial fish in South America. Unfortunately for conservationists, it's often attempted and it's successfully caught. Therefore, it's often problematic to encounter specimens longer than six and a half feet in our time, although individuals with a length of more than 15 feet were also encountered according to unconfirmed data. Be that as it may, already with a length of six and a half feet, Arapaima weighs over 200 pounds, and other underwater inhabitants can practically do nothing to it. The fish's throat and swimming bladder are covered with lung tissue that allows it to breathe ordinary air. Overall, this is an unusual feature, but it's also found in some other fish. 
But what I would definitely call unique in the arapaima is the manner of breathing. During this process, the fish opens its mouth as wide as it can. It feels as if it were preparing to suck up absolutely all the water around it. In reality, though, it's nothing more than a means of defense. Even when there's a drought around the arapaima, it gulps the air, buries itself in silt, and easily survives any hard times. As for this giant's diet, it's pretty standard. The basis of the diet is another, smaller fish. But when the opportunity offers, the arapaima doesn't mind eating something more refined, such as birds. And then you ask a quite logical question. How does such a giant manage to catch with small fish, or even so, nimble birds? Naturally, the arapaima does it all with cunning. It pretends to be a large log. It waits for the current to carry it to a potential enemy, and then in one clear lunge, it kills one. Yes, you can't relax in the Amazon, even when the water around you seems to be full of wooden sticks. Giant Otter Our next guest is unlikely to be mistaken for an inanimate object. However you may look at it, it's an otter, and it's not learnt to camouflage so clearly yet. In its defense, I can say that it doesn't really need it. This mammal of the Martin family usually lives near the river, so to say in shallow water. But when the giant otter gets hungry, it immediately activates a killer mode. Scientists have found that these mammals are among the most talkative of their kind. There are over nine different voices that otters use to communicate. I think you can see where I'm going with this. By communicating with its fellows, the giant otter can easily set up unexpected and effective ambushes for its enemies. Pumas, anacondas, caimans, all these seemingly untouchable creatures can, under certain circumstances, become a relatively easy meal for a group of otters. Nevertheless, our guest mostly feeds on fish. It's the best type of prey in terms of cost and nourishment ratio. But how do they manage it all? Quite simply, actually. On the paws of these creatures, or rather between their toes, there are special membranes that act as flippers. Teeth and claws are a different story. Both are equally sharp, ready to bite and tear away any, even the strongest prey. Piara This monster of the Amazon that you'd better not encounter is called the Piara. It's the most dangerous and frightening fish that's ready to devour even piranhas as voracious as itself and about how easily and effortlessly it pierces its victims. I'm not talking at all, but come on, let's not rush. I suggest that we learn about everything gradually. Piara is widespread in the Amazon basin, where it's a commercial fish. However, the purpose of catching it is not eating it, but a leisure interest, quite advanced and relatively dangerous. It's said that many experienced sailors are helpless under the onslaught of pressure of this river inhabitant. The fish is too aggressive and free to do whatever it wants. To support it in any endeavor, first of all, these two pairs of fangs are used. Despite the fact that the lower ones are noticeably larger than the upper ones, both are considered indispensable and complement each other perfectly. Thanks to them, Piara is able to send its enemy to glory in just a precise bite. The unfortunate prey is planted on the hunter's mouth as on a skewer. No matter how much it may like to take it away, it will not do so. Because of these very things, by the way, Piara is also nicknamed the Vampire Fish. Don't worry, she doesn't drink the blood of her enemies. I don't think so. Bull Shark Yes, yes, there are sharks swimming in the Amazon. And the bull shark is not just quietly doing its underwater business, but it regularly causes a commotion, standing out for its aggressive and extremely unpredictable behavior. To begin with, this predator grows up to 32 inches soon after birth. An adult specimen can be about 8.2 feet long and weigh 285 pounds or more. Naturally, such a considerable size must be maintained somehow. So the bull shark is constantly searching for tasty turtles, nourishing fish, and even other sharks. The tactics of hunting our predator is not distinguished by high complexity. It bites, it retreats, and it bites again. Well, and then it repeats the exercise until the enemy doesn't stop giving signs of life. If you think humans are the exception, I'm going to have to disappoint you. The bull shark does not only hunt humans, but also enjoys doing so at every opportunity. 
That's why every commercial clip that features them is literally drenched in fear of divers. As luck would have it, it was the bull shark that inspired the American writer and screenwriter famous for his novel Jaws. Speaking of Jaws, the bite force of a rather large bull shark has been calculated at 2,128 newtons at the front and 5,914 newtons at the base of the jaw. Relative to weight, it exceeds the compression force of other sharks. The next guest of our episode is not as large and formidable as the bull shark, but it's no less dangerous to others. This is an Amazonian leech that can be felt and filmed only when it's already stuck to someone else's limb and started actively sucking blood. And it'd be alright if the leech was small as most of others. However, this one, compared to the ordinary ones, is a real goliath. The length of the Amazon leech can reach 18 inches, about a foot and a half in length. Would you even believe it? At the same time, because of its dark and completely opaque coloring, it perfectly blends in with various crevices and water openings, and it becomes invisible to others. As befits to all professional parasites, the Amazon leech shuns any movement. Noise and turbulent current are not for it. It prefers an opportunity to pretend to be a piece of mud and hide somewhere in the coastal thickets under a rock or leaves. The main thing is not to be confused. It doesn't like the epicenter of events and hides under rocks. That's why it should not be reserved and it should not count only on small prey. On the contrary, the Amazon leech waits for creatures as large as itself, and you cannot even think about whom it considers its target. The list of its victims includes anacondas, caimans, and all sorts of large livestock. As for the process of sucking out life force, it doesn't happen with teeth. Our Amazonian leech has none. Instead, the leech uses its long and moderately sharp proboscis, reaching six inches in length. With its help, the parasite pierces the skin of victims and sucks blood from rather large vessels. The young feed on amphibians, and adults, as I've already said, look for larger prey. Mata Mata You may have already heard our new guest called the Mata Mata. It's a South American freshwater turtle with an extremely bizarre and peculiar appearance. On average, it grows up to 37 inches in length and weighs about 44 pounds. To be exact, I was talking about the shell, meaning that it's about 37 inches with special jagged edges. The tortoise spends day and night in the water, and to make the process as pleasant as possible, it turns its flat head into a triangle and its nose into a proboscis. Thus, it can stick its head out of the water, it can capture the necessary amount of oxygen, and then it can pretend to be a simple, harmless snag. It's not only the appropriate coloring that helps it pretend to be an inanimate object, but it's also the fringe that covers its head and neck. These outgrowths perfectly camouflage the neck and head of the Matamata -mata for another element of the underwater landscape. It also gives it excellent orientation in space. These outgrowths are particularly sensitive to vibrations, so it's very problematic to catch our hero by surprise. Obviously, all these nuances are needed only for one thing to successfully get close to their future prey and carefully, without unnecessary movements, eat it. Don't think that since it's a turtle, it means that it's kind and that it will not offend anyone. Its diet consists of various kinds of fish. Each of them is eaten only in this way. Mata Mata buries herself in the silt and it waits patiently, not arousing any suspicion in the creatures that swim by. The water currents slowly rock its fringed growths as if to invite small fish, crustaceans, and other not the most intelligent creatures. As soon as the enemy's in sight, the turtle opens its mouth to its full power and sucks him like the most powerful hoover. No one can swim out of the vortex. Why does it suck and not, for example, bite? Yes, because the jaws for the second option in the fringe turtle are too weak. If you believe experts, their strength is not even enough to chew the enemy. Bites are out of the question. That doesn't upset our hero. It pulls off its trademark trick especially fast. No one of the victims can reach to such a thing. Once the opponent is trapped in the turtle, the Mata Mata will gradually release water and wait for the opponent to die of suffocation. As I said, it feeds on fish, so the plan always works perfectly. As soon as the huntress gets bored, the opponent is already suffocated, 
and they can safely have a snack. All stages of food processing, including the determination of taste, occur in the reptile's stomach. Have you ever heard about a snake with 200 teeth in the maw? Later on, I'll tell you about it and other reptiles. Two-headed snakes were variegated, small and rare. Is there anything else to show you? What about this snake? It's the dwarf African viper. From the outside, it looks quite common and doesn't stand out, but has another interesting feature, its style of locomotion. Unlike most snakes, crawling quite flat and straight, this snake moves sideways, and it looks very strange and even creepy. This style of movement is not some kind of showing off in front of other snakes, but a measure of necessity. Imagine yourself on the beach on a very hot day without shoes. You have to walk barefoot on the hot sand of the water. How will you go? By stepping on your full feet or on your toes? Most likely, you'll prefer the second option because it's supposed to be less painful. The snake does the same thing. Due to the strange movement of its body, only two points of contact with the sand. This helps the snake save more surface of its body from burns. Well, such an unusual lateral movement can confuse the creatures the dwarf African viper hunts, preys on small lizards. The reptile attacks them, bites, and injects poison into them. Soon, the prey stops showing signs of life and the snake begins to eat. Now we turn to other reptiles. Stay with us. After all, an incredible experience with alligators is awaiting you. Rope Walking on a rope at high altitude is generally something dangerous, and walking on a rope over a reservoir invested with alligators is something completely creepy. But the man on this video is not afraid of anything. He boldly walks the rope, throwing meat to alligators. Of course, the meat will make them happy, but if the guy falls down, he'll become a reptile's dinner. At one point, he nearly fell, but he still kept his balance and made it to the end. Now, you're probably wondering, what if a man does fall to the alligators? What would that look like? We'll take a look. We see another daredevil performing in front of an audience. He doesn't just walk the rope, but performs various tricks and moves. He even dances on the rope, but his overconfidence plays against him, and he falls right to the toothy reptiles. One of them immediately rushes after him, but luckily the guy manages to get to the edge, and there he's literally pulled out of the water. What would the movie It have looked like if an alligator had starred in the movie, not Pennywise? I think it would go something like this. A man found an alligator in a sewage drain near his house. The creepy reptile stares into the camera with piercing eyes and scares just by its appearance. And here's another drain fan. According to the author of this video, two kids were playing ball near a storm drain, and the ball accidentally fell into it. When they tried to retrieve it, they found such a toothy local. They'll have to forget about the ball now. Enclosure The alligator enclosures are not as safe as you might think, and this footage is a perfect example of that. A female zoo handler led the tour group to the alligator enclosure, and suddenly the reptile grabbed her arm. Every second counted. The woman could have lost her arm, so the man ran to save her. He forced the alligator to let go of the woman and then tightly squeezed its mouth for about a minute. Soon, the hero managed to get out of the enclosure unharmed, and later the reptile was neutralized. The woman was only injured, but she was quickly cured. But the kids were also traumatized, at least psychologically. To see such a creepy scene at such an age is terrible. House Imagine you're living in a house when suddenly you hear some noise in your backyard. Who might be making that noise? Thieves? teenagers who have decided to make mischief? What about an alligator? If the house is in the US, it's entirely possible. This alligator caused quite a bit of chaos. The homeowners called in the dangerous reptile capture workers, and they threw some sort of lasso over the alligator to at least neutralize the monster a little bit. But it didn't really help. Then they began to catch the alligator. When one of the workers approached the alligator, it violently bit the cash pot and scared everyone around. Then the workers chose different tactics and began pouring water on the reptile. This helped subdue the predator, and soon they dragged it down the street into the wild. In the US, alligators can be found not only in the backyard of your house, even at sports games. There's no rest from these reptiles. Here, for example, a huge alligator was walking on the golf course. After the walk, the giant stretched out on the lawn. Maybe it just wanted to join the game and ask the players for a club. Road In the north, deer and moose are often encountered on the roads. In South America, it's common to run into an anaconda on the road. In Florida, the roads are littered with alligators. A German cyclist was shocked to see that alligators can be stumbled upon on the most ordinary road in America. He had to zigzag and be careful not to hit the reptiles. However, the alligators turned out to be polite 
all of them politely made their way for the foreign guest. The German was lucky that the alligators were in a good mood, but what if things had been different and the reptiles had been angry? Or what if he had accidentally bumped into the tail of one of them? Then the alligator would have attacked and it would have ended in a death roll. In this video, you can see what it is. The predator grabs its prey and begins to spin vigorously, clenching its teeth tightly. The strength of alligators' jaws is very powerful, so just a few spins are enough to deprive a victim of their limbs. In the same way, crocodiles deal with their prey. This trainer sits in such a position on the alligator's back on purpose, so that the alligator doesn't perform a death roll. But one mustn't forget about the dangerous jaws. The trainer made a mistake and the alligator bit his fingers. Although the trainer tells those around him that everything's fine and that the alligator doesn't hurt him, it's obvious that he's lying. The man had to be helped. The reptile's jaws were unclenched using a lever, a beam, and branches. So strong are the jaws of the alligators. By the way, there's an interesting fact. The muscles with which the alligator opens its mouth are much weaker than the muscles that close it. That's why the very man who rescued the zookeeper in the enclosure in front of the kids was able to hold the alligator's jaws closed. This is also why the trainer was unable to open the reptile's jaws himself. And here's another trainer. He works with crocodiles. He's teaching one of his charges something by prodding it with a stick. But the man made a mistake, angered the toothy reptile, and it attacked him by biting his leg. It looked brutal, but as the author of the video said, the man got off lightly and received only a few unpleasant wounds. Attack The people in this video were rowing in a canoe on a river in Africa when they saw a crocodile. The crocodile was hiding underwater but came to the surface when it saw the guests. Then the crocodile hides under the water again, only the waves make it clear that it's swimming towards the tourists. Fifteen seconds pass and here's an attack. Although it was expected, you have to admit that it looked very sharp and frightening. Jump. And now we're in Australia. The person on the next video is about to bungee jump into the river. The place doesn't seem to be the worst and the jump was successful. The thrill seeker entered the water, but he entered exactly where a crocodile was waiting for him. And again, we see an attack. Crocodile pounces on the man who dodges only by some miracle. After that, he immediately swims to the shore and rescues at the very last moment. That's a great reminder why you shouldn't swim in Australian rivers. In Africa, crocodiles prefer to attack animals rather than thrill seekers, and there are plenty of animals. A lion, hyena, a leopard, or a cheetah may visit a crocodile, but now we're looking at buffaloes. An entire herd of African bulls is quenching their thirst and cooling off in a body of water when suddenly one of them is grabbed by a crocodile. It's amazing how elaborate and masterful the ambush was. The crocodile approached as inconspicuously as possible and swiftly attacked. It was unreal to dodge the blow. The toothy creature firmly grabbed the bull, fighting its congeners and tourists, and began to pull it into the pond. The buffalo resists but is losing strength gradually. It's almost in the center of the pond and almost completely in the water. It struggles but then floats upside down. Is it dead? Turns out it's not. Somehow it was able to break away from the reptile and make it almost to the shore. There the buffalo collapsed without strength. You bet, the fight was grueling and brutal. Okay, I got carried away with crocodiles a bit. After all, they're not alligators, but other animals, though related to them. I suggest we go back to alligators and get to know them a little better. Keep watching. I'll tell you some interesting facts about alligators that you'll love. Let's start with size. Alligators are large, and you've seen that today. Remember at least the alligator that went to the golf course? But in fact, most alligators are not large and are 6.5 to 10 feet long. Larger males can reach 13 feet in length. And one of the all-time record holders, the alligator from the Alabama River, was 15.7 feet long. Crocodiles are much larger. For example, saltwater crocodiles often grow up to 17 feet in length or more. Occasionally, individuals with a length of about 20 to 23 feet are found among them. And Cassius, the largest crocodile on the planet, kept in captivity, has a length of 17.9 feet, with a weight of about a ton. Although alligators are not very large, they are very fast. In the water and at short distance, they can speed up to 19 miles per hour and up to 12 miles per hour on land. However, they are sprinters, so they run out of steam very quickly. Aggression A running alligator is a scary sight, but it's not a fact that it's running to attack you. Unlike crocodiles, alligators rarely attack humans. This is because they're intelligent. They understand that humans are difficult prey, and it's much easier to hunt something smaller. 
For example, fish, birds, small reptiles, and small mammals. Eyes. The name alligator comes from the Spanish, al lagarto, which translates as the lizard. As for me, it would be better if the name came from al gato, which means the cat. I mean it. Just look how the eyes of these reptiles glow in the dark, just like those of house cats. If you shine a flashlight on them, they'll glow red. That's because, like cats, these reptiles have a structure in the back part of their eyes that reflects light to improve night vision. Teeth Here's an interesting fact. Alligators are considered the toothiest reptiles on the planet, as well as some of the toothiest animals in the world as a whole. An adult alligator has about 75 to 80 teeth in their mouth at one time. Moreover, an alligator does not have them for life. As the teeth wear out or break off, alligators replace them with new ones. As a result, some individuals may grow about 3,000 teeth during their lifetime. Alligators know very well how to use their teeth. They're very sharp and their jaws are very powerful. The bite force of an adult alligator is about 9,500 newtons. This is an incredible value. Right now, only two creatures in the world bite harder than alligators. The great white shark and the saltwater crocodile. So you definitely shouldn't mess with these reptiles. The alligators are dangerous animals with a massive parish. But how can we measure the biting force of this monster? Now I'll let you know. Bite force. Let's start with this interesting value. Bite force is one of the main determining factors in the animal world because it's thanks to jaws and teeth that predators can deal with their prey and vice versa to fight them off. But how can you measure a wild animal bite force? You can't make it do it voluntarily, can you? That's right. That's why scientists use all sorts of devices and methods. Basically, it all depends on size. If the animal is small, it's easy to measure its bite force. Take a look at this frog as an example. A special device is placed in its mouth, after which the frog is squeezed slightly. This causes the amphibian to bite the object because it's a natural reaction to something unpleasant. Its bite force, by the way, was to 32 newtons. This is small value, but it's not surprising. The frog is very small. Other small and harmless animals' bite force is measured using a similar method. Okay, but what about the bigger, more dangerous creatures? Well, that's where we have to act smart. Let's take dogs as an example. We all know that dogs are toothy creatures. It's known that, for example, the pit bull bites very hard, and the grip of the Amstaff is such that it can hang in the air using its teeth alone, caught on something. But how do scientists know the exact bite force of these four-legged creatures? There are two ways. The first is safe and involves biting a bar. The dog bites a block of wood, after which scientists measure the depth of the marks calculate the density of the wood, take into account the weight of the dog and the size of its jaws, and get a figure in newtons. The second method is to use a sleeve. This sleeve is similar to the one designed for dog training. You can see the footage right now of dogs biting a person's arm protected by just such a dense sleeve. A sleeve with a sensor is used to determine the bite force. The dog handler puts it on, the dog bites the sleeve, and it's no longer necessary to measure any marks. The device gives a fairly accurate value. By the way, according to the bite force, the the leader among dogs is not the pit bull at all, as one might think, but the Kangal Shepherd Dog. This wolfhound bites with a force of 1,700 newtons. This almost corresponds to the value of a young saltwater crocodile. Speaking of them, these crocodiles right now are considered the most powerful land biters on the planet. The bite force of a huge saltwater crocodile, weighing more than a ton, exceeds 34,000 newtons. It's an incredible value. But how do you measure the force of the jaws of such a dangerous predator. No protective sleeve can save you. <laughs> of course not. That's why scientists use a special device with a loop on a stick. The crocodile is given the stick, it bites the loop, thinking that it's prey, and the device records the force of jaws compression. It's an effective method, but dangerous. Sometimes the crocodile can get carried away with the game. For example, in this case, it ripped the device out of the scientist's hands. There's another method that's suitable for small crocodiles. The reptile is briefly tied up, forced to open its mouth, and a measuring device is placed directly in its mouth. This method allows you to determine the bite force much more accurately because the reptile does not twitch. It's much more difficult to measure the bite force of marine predators. For example, a shark. 
Therefore, in this case, we have to be satisfied with the method used with large saltwater crocodiles. A measuring device in the form of bait is lowered to the predator. It bites it, and scientists record the value. However, not all marine predators' bite force can be measured this way. Orcas, for example, do not fall for this. In this case, you can do without devices and just do complex calculations. Recently, scientists have found out that the killer whale can bite with a force of more than 84,000 newtons. In comparison with the orcas, even the saltwater crocodile doesn't bite but only nibbles. Scientists obtained information about the bite force of killer whales based on data on the structure of their bodies, as well as the shape and type of their prey. In the same way, scientists calculate the bite force of many other predators and simply dangerous animals, from lions to hippos. And in the same way, scientists calculate the bite force of extinct animals. Of course, no instruments are of any use here. Researchers have to work only with bones and fossils. According to them, they conclude how large the animal was, what it could feed on, and this information allows them to calculate the estimated bite force. The current all-time leader is Dinosuchus, a prehistoric giant crocodile that lived 80 million years ago. The bite force of Dinosuchus, weighing about 10 tons, exceeds 350,000 newtons. That is, this reptile bit 10 times stronger than saltwater crocodiles and about 200 times stronger than us. Yes, by the way, the human bite force is about one and a half thousand newtons. That's not much in comparison with extremely dangerous predators, but our jaws are actually stronger than even those of some wild cats and dogs. That's all, guys. What from this episode surprised you the most? Let me know in the comments. Thank you for watching, and see you later.